Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Scourge of War Gettysburg, a game developed by Norbsoft Dev, published by Matrix and Slytherin Games, and not available on Steam. You actually have to go to Matrix and Slytherin's website to buy it directly. Um, this is a game which, uh, while I had a small role in Scourge of War Waterloo, I had nothing to do with this game's development, but it is one of the OGs of the channel. I used to play it a lot. Uh, and uh, it's one of the first two or three games I ever covered on the channel. This scenario specifically is one of the first scenarios I ever covered on the channel, and this is going to be looking at the Iron Brigade's uh, sort of advance into McPherson's Woods on July 1st of 1863 at the Battle of Gettysburg, as well as the 6th Wisconsin's push into the railroad cut to the north of McPherson's Farm, uh, this is a 30-minute scenario, so it'll be a little bit on the shorter end of the video, uh, and it was taken from a live stream for my Twitch channel from the other night, so if you are interested in joining those, uh, there's a link in the description to my to my Twitch channel. Uh, but yeah, this was taken from a stream. Uh, this is the Battle of uh, the Iron Brigade, if you will, at Gettysburg, one of the more famous engagements at Gettysburg, uh, really played a key role in solidifying the Union position and uh, having Gettysburg turn out the way it did. With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy the video. Sit back, relax, and enjoy, and I'll catch you guys at the end. Oh, if you are interested, there's a link in the description to this game. Uh, it's a store page, since it's not on Steam, uh, and it's in both sort of a standalone Gettysburg version or a collector's edition version uh, in the in the edition, if you want everything, because the game also had DLCs for Antietam, Chancellorsville, uh, Brandy Station, and, and Pipe Creek. Now, without further ado, let's get into the game. Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer, and I'm back, and we are going to be playing the third scenario in Scourge of War Gettysburg. This is a brigade-sized scenario, it is called Blood in the Run, and this is the first scenario, I believe, that I ever showed on my channel over 10 years ago today. Um, not today, but over 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, it is the Iron Brigade scenario of July 1st, 1863. Our character will be Solomon, Solomon Meredith, commander of the Iron Brigade at Gettysburg, and we will be fighting west of Gettysburg on McPherson's Ridge. We've had a long, hot march this morning. Cutler's Brigade is engaged to our front, and it looks like the fighting is coming your way. Hold McPherson's Ridge. Gain 3,000 points for a major victory. Okay. So we're going to jump in here. This is going to be a fun one. We are going to be commanding my uh, my statesman, if you will. I am originally from Wisconsin, uh, and uh, I have an affinity for the Iron Brigade, so that's what we're going to be playing today. Now, I believe when I played this before, 10 years ago, I think I used Headquarter in the saddle mode, which kind of locks you to your your character on a, on a um, as if you're on the horse. Uh, we're obviously not playing that mode tonight here. Um, you can see the scenario starts with General Meredith. We've received or we've relieved General Buford's cavalry and we'll fight the, uh, the battle on this ground. Cutler's brigade is to the north of the Chambersburg Pike and the rebels are moving through the woods to your west to flank his brigade. Deploy your brigade to the south of the pike and drive them out. Establish your line facing west on the ridge. The rest of the corps to de be deployed as they are available. When General Doubleday arrives, I will instruct him to defend the Fairfield Road to the left. We will defend the Chambersburg Pike. I have detached the 6th Wisconsin and 147th New York to act as a reserve for your division. Do not use the 6th unnecessarily. I don't know that that matters. I think I have access to the 6th. So I don't, I don't think that matters. Anyway, let's get marching. Get moving, boys. You can see uh, Buford's boys are off to our right. Cutler's brigade is off this way up here to the right. And then we have to hold. Do we have to send troops over here? I'm not sure. There's General Reynolds. He's going to charge forward into these woods and die with us. One shining moment to reach for the sky. No, I guess the six is detached. It does give me the option. They must... Yeah, they're detached. I was going to say, it gives me the option to use them. 
But I only have one commander, so I can only hold one objective at a time. Like, I don't... Only a commander can hold an objective, and you only get points for your... Commander holding the objective, so... Anyway. Get moving, boys! So that gives me th four regiments moving forward here. Probably shouldn't, like, march along the fence line. That's just gonna exhaust you. So get into the, uh, into the open there. Um, no reason to march on the double. Whoops. As I tell the whole brigade to move on. Okay. Yeah, it's been a while since I played this. We'll speed time up a little bit to make the men march faster and get to the position. You can see it is held by the Confederates, so we are going to have to kick him out of the woods. General Reynolds, maybe he'll charge up with us, I'm not sure. There they are, boys! Form up into double line. Okay, we'll go back to real time. How's their fatigue? They're they're doing okay. Where are you going? I didn't order you way off there, did I? No, oh, I did. Oh. Well, don't quite go that far. Let's let's do a double line instead. There'll be two regiments up front, two in reserve. That'll give me more flexibility to maneuver here. You can see Cutler's Brigade over here on the right. Rebels to our front, 7th Tennessee. Second Wisconsin now to try and flank the Rebs. Looks like Cutler's deploying the 84th to face the Rebs to our front. Oh, there we go. So we can see the enemy has two regiments facing Cutler. It looks like the third is moving into position. And then they've got the 7th Tennessee guarding their flank, which is kind of how I had it set up when I was playing as the Rebs. Why are you marching like that? Let's just do this. All right, so we are in the open. Sometimes the routes that troops take are funny. Oh, there's another regiment coming forward. So the 5th Alabama Battalion and the 7th Tennessee are going to face us. We're moving the 7th Wisconsin up here through these woods. They're in the woods, so they'll be able to take a little bit more punishment. 19th Indiana, why don't you move on to the uh, fence line here from some extra cover? Now, it shouldn't work that way. It's obviously a fence running through our lines rather than along our lines, but if the game's going to let me do that, then I'm going to do it. Extend the line here to meet up with Merida or meet up with Cutler's boys. So we've got the 19th Indiana engaged. I don't know why the 7th isn't firing. And we've got the 5th or we've got the 2nd also engaged. Rebels didn't make it to their fence line, although they are in the woods. Can you... You still have nobody invisible, huh? Well, then go in advance and get closer. All 
and I'm gonna wear my boys out, but... All right, this fence line has changed the tide a little bit for us. Casualties wise, casualty wise with the 19th, we're now inflicting more than we're losing. Second Wisconsin is actually doing the same, even though they're in the open, but I think that's because they outnumber the guys they're shooting at heavily. And so we also have the uh, 24th Michigan here fighting. They technically are in the open. They're fighting the 13th Alabama. I don't even see where they are. Right there to their front. Okay. I don't think these rebs are going to last long. As I keep turning the force on and off. But these guys are going to have the 7th Wisconsin and the 19th Indiana both firing on them. Both on their flank. Not a good day for the 24th Michigan on my right. So we got to drive these guys off, then we got to take the objective, and then I think we might have to move additional troops to the north here to get to that railroad cut. To that end, looks like General Reynolds has followed us, by the way. He's going to die soon. Let's go ahead and move the 6th Wisconsin up that way, just so they're in position. I know, I know Reynolds said they're a reserve, but... We know we can predict the future. We know they're going to be needed there. Meredith standing bravely alongside his boys as they blaze away in the woods. Why there is Japan? I don't know what you mean. Okay. So you can see these guys are, a lot of them are falling. You can see the animation as, uh, as they get hit and fall. We have dead bodies on, so you can see our own, any, any of our own casualties here. General Reynolds has been killed near the woods to our front. General AA is being contacted. It is a sad day for the federal cause in the state of Pennsylvania. Oh, whatever. I mean, I didn't get no... General, or I, I didn't get, you know, it would have been cool if we got that audio from the movie Gettysburg where he's like, I'm brigade forward, and then he dies. <laughs> I'd say has anyone in a movie done less and died faster who's not like a red shirt, except for the fact that uh, he did have a brief, mon you know, dialogue with General Buford before that when he first showed up. Let's go surprise Harry Heath. I don't see a Japanese flag. This is not a Japanese flag. It is, uh, whatever the, uh, brigade flag of the first brigade of the first division of the first corps is. Okay. So the enemy didn't actually retreat here. They just repositioned their firing line. We've taken 58 casualties already here. Now the good news is they're engaging a regiment that we're going to have to engage later and we're getting help from the 84th New York which is an AI unit. Yeah, you get that like triangle cut flag that represents a commander or something like that. It's actually, I think that's kind of the style of like a cavalry flag. Seventh Tennessee's taken a beating. Twenty so fourth Michigan is as well, sixty three casualties, but they've inflicted over sixty on the enemy. Also, Seventh Wisconsin's having a good day here. Sixty seven casualties inflicted, not a single man lost yet. They haven't been shot at. They're just they've just got f target practice going on here. I'm tempted to just charge the rebels and kick them out of position that way. What do I need again? 3,000 score to win here. But 
but I, I get the sense the seventh is going to break soon. We've got the 14th Tennessee coming up as well. They're going to be fresh. Sixth Wisconsin. I'm assuming the railroad cut's going to be where we want them soon. Archer's Brigade's going to get wrecked in two straight scenarios. Well, it kind of was the geography of what he found himself in, and then just the fact that, you know, that's where the federal reinforcements were coming forward, and he was on the flank and kind of exposed. Here's some artillery firing canister. I'm assuming that the Rebs over here, Davis is coming over that way. Let's advance 19th. A little bit more. Be nice to oblique the 24th into the fence line to cut their casualties down. All right, rubs are gone there. So move the 7th Wisconsin up. We're going to move you on the double just to get you in before. Those reinforcements coming up can do anything. Okay, the 5th Battalion on the flank is gone now too. So Meredith's left is coming forward. Extend the 7th out a little bit to support the 24th. I think that, I don't think there's any rebel guns. That's got to be federal canister. Naps was uh, was Uncle John on a horse when that happened? I thought he was just walking around, but I could be wrong. You're talking about when he was at, uh, what was it? Um, Appomattox, no, not Appomattox, Spotsylvania Courthouse. And he said uh, they couldn't hit an elephant at this distance to try and encourage his men. And then like a second later, he got shot down. Well, it looks like the 84th New York got driven back. Thanks, boys. You did your job. You really can't shoot at anyone here? Let's get in behind these guys. 14th Tennessee's taking a, taking a leak. Leak? Taking a licking? They're taking a leak, boys. <laughs> Have at them. Sorry, I've got the trees mostly turned off here makes it hard to fight this particular scenario when you can't see no it was when they said they couldn't hit an elephant at this distance that was at a Spotsylvania courthouse that was that was John Sedgwick there might have been a similar event in another battle but the one you're referring to was Appomattox or not Appomattox keep saying Appomattox the one you're referring to was um Spotsylvania Courthouse during the Overland Campaign. We caught him on the bathroom break, boys. Had him. All right, send the seventh there, the sixth Wisconsin up there to help. Meredith, you really got to take that objective so I can get the damn points. Not that like a Civil War battle should be about the points, because that's one of those things with, you know, one of the one of the big complaints a lot of folks have with war games is they tend to mythologize the sense of the magical hill like oh man this is the hill we gotta take to hold and then you and then the game doesn't really tell you why it's just sort of like this is the hill the game says you have to take and then if you look into it it's like well why well because that's historically the hill that was a central part of the battle but it could have been any one of a number of hills right and that's one of the things i really like about sid meyer's gettysburg because there are important hills and scenarios and objectives that you have to hold, but they fit within the context of the individual scenario. And then because the battle is fought in a series of scenarios, and because the campaign is kind of dynamic where the next scenario you, you fight is based on the previous scenario, 
you can have a battle that plays out like history where Cemetery Ridge is the most important feature of the battlefield, or if the battle unfolds differently, you can have a scenario where McPherson's Ridge is the most important ridge of the battle, or Seminary Ridge is the most important ridge in the battle. And so it does a much better job of explaining like, okay, this hill is important because of where the armies are right now. And while Cemetery Ridge does control the general area, you know, if if the Union never get pushed off Seminary Ridge, then the entire story of the day of day one is not about rallying on Seminary Ridge or Cemetery Ridge. It's not about anything other than, you know, just holding sem- cemetery or sorry, Seminary Ridge versus Cemetery Ridge. So the context of like which hills matter and why is often because of in in war games, it's often because, well, that's just the way it was in in real life. It's because of the context of the situation around it. Now, Cemetery Hill and Cemetery Ridge were important at Gettysburg because they command the general area. But if the Federals had never been pushed off of Seminary Ridge, there's a difference of a C and an S in these in these ridges and hills, um, then the battles general position could have looked very different. Right, Rebs are in the railroad cut, as far as I can tell. Alright, so we're holding the Hoobs Woods. We've driven the Rebs back here. We'll keep pushing them back. And we're getting the points for that. 24th Michigan here in the open. I think the Rebs kind of are too. But Archer's Brigade gets wrecked. And the second Wisconsin is coming up. Okay. Okay, so they got driven back. Six Wisconsin is helping. I don't know who they're shooting at exactly, but I think the Reb's down in the trench. And just think, in a hundred years, this spot will be a metal detector's dream. Maybe. We're going to send the 24th Michigan up to the right flank of the 6th Wisconsin. These guys are still on the fence line, so... Let's also send the 7th Wisconsin up that way. I don't know how much time is left in the scenario. I think only like 10 minutes. I wish I knew it was able to click on the objective to see how much it was worth. Hundred points a minute from McPherson's farm. 200 points a minute for herbs to herbs to woods. So obviously that's more important. So we need to, I don't know that we have enough time to get a major victory here. Let's go ahead and speed things up a bit. So six Wisconsin is, is holding their own here against the Rebs to their front. They're giving us some positive points, nothing dramatic, but something. That's funny. Those Rebs keep wheeling and then they like appear and disappear and appear and disappear. Are they falling back? No, they're not. Okay. Kamkachi, thanks for the follow. Assuming they're going to do better. 
High ground bonus. 62, 70. Yeah, okay. So they're doing okay there. Um, we're still holding that objective. So we got to hold it for five more minutes. I think there's only four more left in the game. So hopefully the uh, six Wisconsin, it gave us an extra 73 points there. So maybe that's enough. We got to get to 3,000. We may have been too slow in getting to the woods. We'll see. I suppose we could push forward with the six and, and hope maybe we can. Engage the Rebs here and inflict more casualties than that than they on us. Ah, victory, not a major victory. Not sure it matters or not. We fell short by a hundred points. We lost two hundred nineteen men. The enemy lost five seventy four. Definitely less bloody than the Iron Brigade historically lost. But I think if we were to go to here. 3900 do you need 3000 to promote yeah so you need the you need the 3000 to consider like that uh a, a completed scenario in the sense that like to conquer gettysburg you have to you have to have every scenario is a major victory it's kind of funny because it doesn't really matter but it's kind of like this is an achieve those are achievements so like winning every victory on major is an achievement um that is something that it doesn't like the game doesn't have achievements built in because it's not on steam but it's an achievement for an off steam game which is kind of kind of interesting anyway guys that's going to do it for this scenario a little bit on the shorter end uh it was a 30 minute scenario and we used a little bit of time compression uh, if you are playing the game and you're not sure how to use time compression it is the plus and the minus keys at the end of your keyboard um i believe you can get up to times four speed or speed uh so you can compress scenarios a fair bit although nothing lightning speed um, but yeah, with that being said, that was Scourge of War Gettysburg, developed by Norb Soft Dev, published by Matrix and Slytherin Games. And um, without further ado, we're just going to wrap things up here. So I hope you guys enjoyed the videos. Leave your thoughts down below. And as always, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.